All right, Shalom, Rastafari. It's Wendem Yadon again. It's Wendem, brother Yadon, otherwise known as Ras Yadinos Tefari. I, Ras Yadonis Tefari, of the LOJ Society, the Line of Jews Society of the Imperial Majesty. We want to touch on some terms. There's a few things that we want to, that the Holy Spirit has put in I and I meditation to speak on. But I think first, let's touch on some terms. Some, some terms that we um, have used before, that, but, we'll, but that we will use again in the future. So ones will understand what the different applications. I remember reading in, I think it was Macy's book, which gleans from here and there, um, Gerald Macy's works, and I'm speaking about, I think, um, volume two. I might have it right here, volume two of the book of the beginnings. Now, if you have any portion of the Torah portion, the books that we publish, the Torah portions. Let's see if I have this one right here. Um, let's see if I have this one right here. I think it's a good here. Uh, let's not. Yeah. So, like, like this one right here, this is the uh, Devarim, right? Right, the Hebrew book of Numbers. This is where we're at right now. All right. Now, if you read the introductory notes, we basically touch on we and the disclaimer. We we state from the outset that what our initial basic discipleship studies is on is getting to know basically what is as it is. You understand it concerning Judaism, concerning uh, the Hebrew Bible, New Testament. This is why some of the resources out there we should be utilizing these resources in our Bible studies so we can get up on the knowledge. Education is the key. But now there's some application. Some of what we're learning, we actually can apply. So it's not to be just forgetful hearers of the word, but the doers of the deed. In fact, when we speak about the work of Jah, I recall reason for brethren just earlier today, and we got to, I think it was 6, uh, chapter 6, John 6, um, 29, let's see if I recall that, um, with the spirit of my mind, John chapter 6, let's see if it was 29, 6, let's see, um, 20, yeah, John chapter 6, hallelujah, because I've been seeking to also practice what I and I teach, and that is this fivefold, the fivefold keys of hearing the word, hearing the word, you know what I'm saying? Of reading the word, Allah nababat shuhume. You understand? Have you not read? Um, thirdly, studying the word. Study and show thyself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed. So, if you're not approved and you claim to be a workman of God's works, then you will be ashamed. So, remember, hearing the word. You understand? Hearing the word. Faith comes by what? By hearing the word, and the word, you understand, and the faith comes by hearing, and the, the, the hearing of the word of God. You see, it's the hearing of God's word. Now, when we hear, of, when we hear worldly things, because we hear a lot of things from the world, and this affects, adversely affects our faith, our confidence in ourselves, our ability, and many people are still struggling and heavily burdened because they have believed what they have heard. So when they read the word, they want to accept it as true, but they've already accepted something else that's not true in its place. So now they have to use the power of, of affirmation or denial in that case. So when you find out that even though you have been led to believe that which is not true, what do you have to do begin? You're shocked, of course. You're shocked at first. But once you make sure you, you, you um, study and verify it, you know, you really make sure that, is this really what, wow. So you have to deny that. You understand? You can't go around saying, well, yeah, that's true, when you find out that, well, it's not true, and you have the evidence, and you've studied the evidence. You see what I'm saying? So faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And one version, I think I was thinking that in one version, they put a footnote and say, by the word of Christ. Instead of the word of God, some put the word of 
word of Christ, as though that is to create a major difference to those of us who recognize the triune God. You understand? Because the Father and the Son, in the Holy Spirit, they speak to one another. And now we come into that when we keep the word, when we keep his word. What does it mean to keep his word? You understand? Where do we keep his word? We keep his word in our head and in our heart. And when it grows in our heart, that's when, that's when faith now has its true application. We, we can accept something intellectually true, but we may not truly believe it, but on a higher level, have faith in it, admit that it's true, to receive it. You know what I'm saying? To receive it. We read these promises in the Word of God. You understand? We, we will study these things. And then isn't it interesting how some of the so-called other nominal Christians out there might only be like a one-verse Charlie. They believe one verse or this or that. And it works for them according to their faith. Even Christ demonstrates that with the serial Phoenician woman. He ignores her at first. You know what I'm When she comes to him talking about her daughter that have a devil, because if you recognize she was of a different nation and Christ points that out, he said, I have not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he says, it's not for me to give the children's bread to dogs. And she acknowledges truth, Lord, but the dogs eat that which fall off the master's table. She responded with an argument and almost, we can even say, a legal argument. And Christ says, you know, great is thy faith, because you have faith, be it to you according to your faith. You understand? So he shows and demonstrates at a basic reality, even if you say apart from Bible or spirituality, they, te they have teachers now running around teaching this now in this whole New Age thing, you know, thinking positive and what you, if you, if you can positively believe it, so forth and so on, really showing that we have this power in us, and this power is truly the God power. But now in covenant, you see, the, the difference between those in the world, you know what I'm saying, who in a sense are stealing fire like Prometheus from the gods to do their own thing, to light their own so-called way in the dark and eventually to, you know, fall to the pride of Satan falling from grace. So allow that to be for them. But we have to work out I and I salvation. So we have to know this word. So the first work, when we talk about what work that we must do, Christ says it right here in John chapter 6, verse 29, where it says, Yes, so Yeshua answered and said to them, This is the work of God. This is the work of Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be he. That ye, it says here, King James, be leave. Now, we've already overcome at the basic kindergarten level of Rastafari discipleship. We already deal with that word belief. So when we see this word belief or believe, it doesn't offend us. So in the teaching of his magic, we know that's ma'amen. You understand? Or amen, amen, and amen. And this is what I wanted to show before. The tri, the, the, the tri unity, or we can say the trinity, in the word amen. Now, amen, right? Amen is what you call, you understand, and what is called in English, believe and belief. Now, of course, we say I and I, I and I now believe, I and I know. Well, of course, that's the overstand. That's a, like a metaphysical extrapolation. You understand? That's a summary of an exegesis right there. But there's more to it. So, no folks will say, I and I not deal with belief. So when they're reading this Bible without the pure language, it's impossible for them to open up the science and the wisdom of it because they see that word there, they get lost, in other words, in translation. So we don't get lost in translation. We need to understand a couple of terms and terminology. And this wasn't my main point that I wanted to bring, but just I'm going to move in the Holy Spirit with this, that let's deal with the word believe and put a big quotation mark be some say lie eve believe now remember this is english right now they also use the word faith right and they also use the word trust right and they also use the word confidence right and they also use the word confidence mm. It's probably some other words also in translation. But all of these, here's what's interesting, all of these 
link with what we know as the uh, Amen, right? As the uh, Amen, right? What we know as the Amen. Now we find Amen, of course, in Revelation. This is the keystone verse right here, Revelation 3, 14. Some say because it's similar to um, the pie right there. It's pie, Pythagore, and so forth and so on, the golden mean ratio. You know, we can touch on that sacred geometry. But there's mathematics and science and harmony in that, even when we check out what pi is. And the interesting movie that was put out some years ago, Pi as well. You might have seen it before, but check it out again. And, and you'll, you'll, hopefully you'll be able to understand more with this basic groundation here. So we have Amen, but Amen can be in three forms, right? Amen here is in the noun form. If you go to Revelation 3 and 14, you'll say Christ, the Moshiach, is identifying himself as the Amen. But now, this word is used here in belief as a verb. You understand? Now, of course, if you don't understand, if you're illiterate, if you're not able to read and write, if you're not able to look up and to study, you're saying that you're going to get caught up on the belaiv. You understand? And you will be deceived. And this is what happened with belaiv. That's just the basic elementary level. In fact, when we showed about the, about the three candles, the three lights, you understand, within so-called basic mason, masonry, the first candle is for belief, and it's the novice level. This is the novice level right here. You understand, this sort of word, believe. If most people just say believe, and, well, what, what does believe really mean? What is believe in Hebrew? The, or me'amen, me'amin. What is believe in Hebrew? And why is this root amen or amen? which sounds a whole lot like ancient Egypt. Sounds a lot like some Egyptian thing there. What's the link? How, what's this relationship with Egypt and the Israelites? You understand? Since one could pass for the other, and we know from the monuments and the wall paintings that they were reddish-brown peoples, or what we'll call today black peoples, really originally Ethiopic peoples. But that's our nationality. We want to still build a foundation on faith here, right, and build up a little bit more on faith. Because what we're seeing among a lot of our brothers and sisters is that they have faith, but their faith is weak. When I say weak, it needs to be strengthened. You know, the Bible says that's where the taking on of the word and the knowledge, you see, we need that knowledge in the growth of our faith. When it says, be born again from above, the spirit of our mind, you understand? And then that seed, you understand, of the word, it, it becomes rooted and grounded in our heart. And the ancient Egyptians have an interesting, some interesting, um, in the mysteries, symbology. Um, there's an instrument, I, I don't recall the name of the instrument now in ancient Egypt, but it looks like a spade in a sense, and it has the heart connected with like the esophagus and the mouth and how it has a really high spiritual interpretation. But when I start to link that with the scriptures, you understand, it shows that in the true ancient mysteries that were preserved in Egypt that Moses was familiar with, it was a form of pre-Christianity. You understand? Pre-Christianity. But don't get... Um, don't, don't make a mistake. Don't, get, don't think we're talking about whitewash. We're not talking about Caesar Borgia's or, or, or Romanism, so forth and so on. We're going to the very root. You understand the Ethiopian eunuch and Ethiopia and the, and the black and, and the, the black Jews and the Beta Israel and, 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 and the Ethiopian eunuch. We're speaking about the our witness. You understand? We're going to our evidence. You know, and this is where we have to root ourselves. You understand? To our own vine and our own fig tree. You understand? Now, our main has three senses. It has as a verb, this is a noun here, a person, place, or a thing, right? This is as a verb. Faith here, you understand, is, is, is a noun, but when it says have faith, it actually, in a sense, becomes like a verb, and then you have faithful, which is more adjectival, so forth and so on. Now you have the word trust. You understand, you have the word trust. 
which also has a verb, and, and it can go verb and transitive, verb transitive. Then you have confidence. You understand? Confidence. Now, what's so very interesting, and we like to point out this particular contrast to bring faith, hopefully the idea of what faith is. Because, see, ones are having mental or intellectual roadblocks. You, you're hearing this word, you're getting it, but you're not getting the app. You're saying you're not getting, well, what is the application? Okay, I, I hear this. What am I to do? Hear this word right here. It says, this is the work of God. This is the work of Jah, that ye believe, that ye have faith, that ye trust, that ye have confidence, so that you admit as true. You admit in this or that as it is true. You understand? It's almost like... Um, when one goes into court and they say, well, do you swear or you say, I affirm. It's like when we say in, in that sense, I affirm. You affirm something. You're admitting something as the truth. You're not saying that you know it all, but you're admitting on it from what you do know. You affirm it as the truth. That means you accept it at, without any doubt. It's not like, like a maybe amen. You know, there's not a maybe amen. There's no maybe. Maybe amen is superstition. You see, the maybe, you know, the maybe faith, you understand, is superstition. The yay, nay, the double-mindedness, that's superstition. You understand, that's superstition. But here is the work of God, that ye believe, that ye have faith, that ye have trust, confidence, that you accept as true on him whom he hath sent. So the work of Jah, our first work, brothers and sisters, and this is like basic discipleship, and perhaps this really goes first because the foundation needs to be upon the faith. It says that it's impossible, you understand, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please our Abba without faith. And here's what's interesting. We have faith or we even do believe, even though we may not call it consciously, we're unconscious of it. You know, like I use the dollar bill example. I don't know where I put that dollar. I use it, oh, there you go. I use the dollar bill example saying that we believe in that. You know, we believe in a, 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 a dollar bill. You, you understand? Like if I said, well, I'll give you $1,000 or, or, or check out the next 10 lectures. You know what I'm saying? Most people say, well, I'll take the thousand because you believe that that can do you more. Some would, would accept that because that would do them more, you know what I'm saying, good than hearing that which they don't believe, that they don't exercise no faith, no, no, no trust in it. So when we see the dollar bill, y'all, you know what I'm saying, people have faith in it, even though they know based on what they hear and all the reports of people losing their jobs and high inflation and unemployment and recession and taxes and this and that, they know that something is wrong. You understand? They know that something is wrong, and, and, they, and even the politicians and the rest of them try to talk confident, but they say something's really wrong with this, and we need to try something fast, but people still go about, you know, buying and selling and eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, like, you know, fire their musmus, but still them think a cool breeze, yeah. You understand? You know, fires, I mean, the, I mean, look at the forest fires right now. It's very interesting. You know, there's so many of them going on, they can't just blame it on the anonymous arsonists. You, you know, they know that something, something bigger is going on. But when we turn to Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh, he or she, who seeks to come to God, to the Abba, to I and I Father, to their Father, to the Father of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, must believe, you understand, must believe. Notice how it's using faith. It's using faith in one sense as a noun. You understand, know as a noun, but without faith, right, without this substance or this, this, this metaphysical hypostasis or thing, you understand, know it, it is not possible to please him, to bring joy or happiness to God, to Jah. For he or she or one who cometh to Jah 
must believe or they must act on this in a verbal aspect. Now, how do we, how do we express believe? How, do we believe on the dollar? People say, oh, I don't believe in the dollar. Yes, you do. You understand? Oh, yes, you do. If you lose some of it, you feel it. There's a deep feeling. There's like an intimate relationship. It's almost like a loved one. Now, I know folks, when they think about it, be like, oh, shit, oh, man. But see, that's the, rea- that's the wake-up call that folks make. It doesn't mean that you st- still shouldn't use it, but you think you're only using it. But then if you have more of it, you feel better. You feel more confident. Notice you, you feel more confident. If somebody's always giving you money, you probably be trusting them. You understand? You'll believe what they say. You have faith in them. You know, they say, well, they just cannibalize somebody. They, oh, no, they couldn't do that because, you know, they're, they're a good person. I, I believe in them. You know, I have confidence in them. You see, I, you trust them. And your trust was actually bought. And then here's the, the shocking thing, that even behind the dollar is, is nothing. Really, it's, it's a belief. It's all based on belief. If you listen to some of those business shows, if you, if you like watching and you happen to listen to the business shows, you'll hear them use words like trust and confidence. We have to restore confidence and trust to the economy. It's all about trust and confidence. And that verse in Daniel where it says, um, um, with peace he shall destroy many, it doesn't use the word salam, Bamarinya, according to his majesty's Metzhav Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, in the, in the Tinbete Danel. Instead, it uses the word, the form of metamen, you know, or metamamen, you understand, um, which means to have confidence, you, you know, the, the idea of confidence, the same thing they keep saying about the money. We've got to restore confidence and trust in the monetary system. Here's what's so interesting. You have folks graduating from colleges and stuff and ones who graduated before in economics, economics majors, and, and they would tell you they don't even understand the economic system. They don't even really understand how it all started or what the, how the banking system really runs. They don't, you know, they'd be telling you on these shows, they, they, these, they have all these laws, but people believe it. It's a religion. It's, it's really a religion. It's the Babylonian secular religion. You know what I'm saying? And, and the scriptures warned us about that. But here, where we're at right here, we have to not, in other words, believe in the false things we believe or trust in. Now that we recognize we hurt ourselves psychically when we do that. You know, it's one thing to say, and it's not saying don't have money, don't use money, don't get money, so forth and so on. But really, you have to check your heart on it. You really got to check your heart on it. Because, remember, the money is a thing. But if you attach too much of your soul, your essence to it, you hurt yourself. And then how do you replace that, which you lose of your soul? How do you replace that apart from Christ? How, how is that restored to you outside of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. You, you know what I mean? That is, that is what you must think about. You understand? But he that cometh to God must believe, must trust, must admit as true that he is, that he exists. You, you know, when we say Jah or Yah or Ehye, Asher, Ehye, you know what I'm saying? I am that I am. We're saying that, that, that the whole idea of the great I am, you know what I'm saying, or Jah, or Jehovah, as it's interpreted and translated, means he who exists. You understand? The whole great I am is the he who exists. In other words, I am. You understand? He who is who he is is Yahweh. You understand? Jehovah doesn't mean I am that I am. Jehovah means he is who he is. Ehyeh, shara, ehyeh. That means I am that I am. You have a lot of folks out there who are, you know, um, learning that, but some of the older classical European biblical scholars, they did well in many ways, but they didn't have it perfect because they ignored the Ethiopian testimony. But those scholars who were able to, like Dillman, um, August Dillman in Ethiopic Grammar, really helps to explain that. But that's dealing with, you know, the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is part of our inheritance. But the first thing is first is the foundation of faith. You understand the foundation of faith. You see, it's the faith that, that powers our prayers. 
You understand? That which we seek of the Father for our life, for our protection, for our well-being, for our health. You understand? It's our faith. You, you, you know, it's, I, I don't want to put this on nobody, but I'm just, I'm just thinking in the example I gave about the money, that there are some people who believe if they get like a $10,000, right, you know, they will have more faith in getting $10,000 than, than praying to the Father, working and trusting that he'll make a way for that much or more. You know, they have more faith in that idea of this spell witchcraft that we call the so-called money or really um, promissory notes. You understand? Credit slips, really. And slip, we emphasize that word. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, so, there's two things that I mentioned here. They said that without faith, it's, it's impossible to please him. Now, it's interesting that Yeshua, Jesus Christos, reveals his, his, his true identity, his ancientness in Revelation to the disciple whom he loves, to Johannes, which means the grace of God. And we're saved by what grace? So now in Johannes' testimony, Johannes Arai, the vision of Jah's grace, this is the vision that we have to understand. What is the vision of Jah's grace for I and I? You see, the world is telling us a lot of things, and we're believing that, but this is what's, what, what's hurting us. This is what's slowing us down. This is what's getting us distracted. This is what stops us from coming together. This is what stops us from joying, even when there's so-called tribulation. You see, that's the key. When Christ keeps telling us in those days and time, see that your heart be not troubled. He didn't say, well, try not to be so troubled about it. No, he says, see that your heart, and what you have to see to it, these things are in our, you understand, know are in our power. You understand know what the Psalm 23 says, and he restoreth, you understand, know my soul for his what? Name's sake. You understand? And which name is raised above every other name? It's the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. That scripture, even above the Father's name, is the name of Yeshua, of Jesus Christos, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says so. You understand? And this is what makes it interesting for us of Rastafari caliber is when we hear and read of his majesty and we, we regard his majesty so highly. You understand? And then we see that he is... He is testifying to us both in living manifestation and in word, in word and in deed of Getachin and Jesus Christus and reminding us that without him we can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. You understand? And therefore with him we can do all things. Isn't that a sweet meditation? You understand? Those sort of meditations allow us to keep our spiritual and psychical level above the trials and tribulation. We know that this too will pass. You know what I'm saying? We know that this too will pass. Now, the um, area of Scripture, let's see, the area of Scripture that we wanted to um, touch on from here as we, okay, Revelation, Revelation, where he says that he is the Amen. So it says, without Amen. Right? Without faith. It's, it's what? Impossible to please God. You understand? To please God. Notice how many things of the world that we seek to please. Whether it's people, whether it's different things. You don't want to pay your bill late because you don't want to have the overdraft or whatever. Like, but that's still seeking to please. But how many things we, you know, seeking to, you know, and what's so interesting is that under even covenant law, the only one we had to pay anything to, you understand, really on a regular consistent basis because we had to pay to was to our offerings to John, to his tabernacle for the late, it's like our tithes, you understand, and maybe whatever else we had to, you know, deal with. If you give me a sheep, I give you a cow or whatever else the arrangement may be, you understand, or, or olive oil, for, for some kanab or some, or however the agreement, you understand, went between people and the mercato, the gebiya, the marketplace, we didn't have to pay in the sense for, like, you know, living on the earth and taking up this piece of square land, you understand, because man gave up his rulership, 
You understand? Man gave up his rulership. And we want to touch on man, um, Adam, that is, giving up his rulership. We want to touch on Adam giving up his rulership. But before we even get to it, let us deal with this, this quote that we wanted to put forward. So just remember, faith is, faith is the main thing. From time to time, we're going to deal with some Devar Torah. Devar Torah is like the word of the Torah or, or the speaking of, of the law. Remember, we're not under the law of sin, but we are in law. We're in the spirit of the law of Christ, and that's biblical. You see, you have to ask yourself the way some of these so-called Christian and preachers preach. You have to say, is faith in, in Christ lawless? Because it seems like what they are bordering on in some way of saying that law is suspended, you understand, from Sunday to Sunday, but yet there's law every other place that one has to bow down, you understand, and even has authority over them. And it's not the law of God's government, but it's the law of Satan's kingdom. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that. You, you see what happened when they crucified Christ and they say, we have no king but Caesar. We're living in a time where people say they're Christian, but they're saying the real king, the real sovereign is Kaiser Borgia, not our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But now if we accept Yeshua HaMoshiach, make sure we accept him in spirit and in truth. And understanding that, admitting that his word is true. You understand? And learning of him and admitting in, 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 in the word as being real, as being tangible. It is tangible once you see the book is dead. I've been talking in this way because the scripture says the letter is, is dead. It's right there in the book. But when it's living as principle, as life, as a living word, you understand? The living word when you are practicing, like when he says, see that your heart be not troubled. You understand? And he says he's with us even to the end of the age or the end of the world. So, so, so why are we afraid? Why are we troubled? Why are we fearing what we're hearing from the heathen and sheathen? That's because our faith is, is still weak. You understand? It's still weak. We have to strengthen it. You understand? We have to strengthen our faith. This is in our power to do. You understand? This is in our, power, our responsibility even. Because it says to grow up to him in all things. How do we grow up to him? You understand? That's what it says, that the law is our schoolmaster until Christ come. In other words, until the Christ conscious, until one is mature in Christ. You understand? Until one is mature in Christ. That means that have no doubt about it. Experiences what they are preaching on in the word. So that they, it's not that they are saying this because it sounds good, but they have a real experience. You see, when you have the experience, then you have the resonance. The resonance is there. And if people don't get it or they don't want to get it or they choose not to get it, it doesn't bother you so much. You know, like a lot of folks trying to make somebody else, you know, there's no make-believe up here. You understand? Our main does not, even in this bad King James translation and the, the bad, I would say, is belie, belief. You understand? But remember, it's a foreign word. This is a foreign word. This is our original. You understand? And this links with our Hebrew. This is the Afro Shemitic. You understand? So we know that the Amen is Christ. So it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God with our faith. What it's really saying is it's impossible to please, to come to God and not to be in Christ and not to have Christ and his word living within you. You understand? And even when we pray to the Abba, to the Father, we pray in the name of Yeshua. You understand? That, that's access. That shows, that shows obedience as well as recognition that our link, our restoration, our redemption, you understand, is in our sonship is sealed, you understand, in and through Yeshua. Yeshua is that mediator, that only mediator. People say there's a lot of ways to God, you understand, they're lying to you, they're deceiving you, you understand. I mean, there's a lot of ways, but a lot of these ways end up with dead ends, end up at dead ends, you understand. There's only one way now in Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know, some folks, they don't like it because they figure that, well, everybody's religion or faith or whatnot is of equal value. Well, if that's free speech, they can say that. We say that's not so. 
You know what I'm saying? That is absolutely not so. Here's what we admit, that all these other religions, and we study even ancient times, they were seeking Yeshua. They were seeking Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. They were looking forward. They did have a vision of that one. You know what I'm saying? But in their own traditions, even within the Judaic traditions, things had got boggled down on man-made stuff. Yeshua reminded them that John said um, to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy, to keep it set apart. But they added a whole bunch of other rules and regulations. You know what I'm saying? They added heavy burdens to it. You know what I'm saying? To keep the people caught up in religiosity. You know what I'm saying? So which one was wrong? Which one was Christ against? You know what I'm saying? He didn't come to destroy the law, you understand, know or the prophets. He came to fulfill that. You know what I'm saying? To fulfill it, both to perfect it, not just to end it, no, to fulfill it. So that we too can fulfill it in and through him. There is such a deep connection with that. I don't think I've done due justice to the point in my own heart. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been meditating and reasoning on this with different ones, but I've been wanting to come forward with this teaching because a lot of the things that we're facing, you know what I'm saying, and situations are really easy to deal with. They've already been dealt with, but we don't accept that because we're getting caught up on how things seem. We're judging things by the parents, and we're not really in the Spirit, you know what I'm saying, and having the Holy Spirit helping us with discerning even in making decisions, you know what I'm saying, even in doing what it is that we have to get done, we don't bring that to the Father in prayer. You know, it's interesting how the Scripture says that men should pray always and faint not. Um, Luke 18 and 1, he said that men should, he gave a parable to them, a, 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 a metaphoric, mythical, mystical um, story, that he gave to them around Luke chapter 18 and 1, and he says he gave this parable so that men might always pray, pray always and not to faint. What does it mean to faint? You know, it says that men would faint in the light of the days when they see the signs and see what's happening. You begin to see it. You begin to see people going cuckoo, people going crazy. It's at the end of the world, and, you know, like some, some crazy stuff, and then just fainting, almost like dying because of expectation of what is to happen. You understand? Um, or perhaps because they are so, so this world which is passing is their only hope. And as they think that it's passing away, they can't take it. They can't live. You understand? Because they haven't invested their life in truth and in God and in Christ and in true love for God and for their fellow man. You understand? And their fellow woman in the human community. So much of this, you know, is, is our responsibility as human beings and particularly as black men. You understand? But so much of it is our responsibility. That's what's so deep about it. When you really, really overstand that. Yeah, the white man and the Romans and, the, well, they already got their judgment. The Gentiles are sealed up. You understand? But remember, the eye of the storm is not really the Gentiles. It's Beta Israel. It's the Ethiopian Hebrews. You know, and that's the real eye of, that's the real focus of, of, of Jah's purpose and Jah's will. You know, and for us to freely choose to fulfill his will. But I wanted to point this out right here that on page 180, there's something interesting that the Gemara, the Gemara says, it says that he that has learned the scripture, and whether if you've learned the so-called Bible or the scriptures or Torah, and not the Mishnah, one who has learned the scripture, and not the Mishnah, um, is a blockhead. You know, and um, they said that some Talmudists, they affirm that to study the Bible is nothing but a waste of time. But now hold on. Now you can take that one quote right there, and you can go with that and say, oh, look at the Jews, the Talmudists, but you have to understand something. It's like, we talk about the five keys, and you can hear the word. You know that some people will be in a church service or, or a preacher would really be preaching, and they're getting the message, and the preacher, you know, stimulates them emotionally, and they leave that all hyped up like they're, they're running on gas that the preacher gave them, so forth and so on. But soon, as, soon enough, um, you know, um, some offense, 
you know, a tribulation because of the word comes their way and, and that disguise fades away, so forth and so on. But they just heard the word. They didn't even read it for themselves. Like somebody might come to them and say, well, how do you know that? Oh, I heard this preacher. Yeah, but well, you don't even know if it's in the Bible. You know, a devil might say that. You don't even know if it's in the Bible. And you'd be like, well, is it for real? And then, you know, because you didn't check. You didn't sit down and write down that verse the preacher said. You understand? Or later on afterwards say, oh, preacher, what was the verse that you quoted right there I wanted to when you were talking about? Where did that come from? It came from the scripture, a scripture, any scripture, holy book, writing, or anything like that. Oh, you're just making that up, right? You know what I mean? You have to really, because see, this is your spiritual life. It's like if you're investing money in a sense. And so I use that money example because it's like money is the God of this world. So if we're going to talk about God or belief rather, not God, but if we're going to talk about belief, you know what I'm saying? Not true God, but we're going to talk about belief in something that is like a God or a false God, that will be money. You know what I'm saying? And we all, in one sense or another, you know what I'm saying, have our garments defiled, our spiritual garments defiled with the God of this world. And, and it's what says, come out of Babylon. You know what I'm saying? It's not just a place. First and foremost, it's a state of mind. Because Babylon means confusion. When you ask most folks, well, what do these words mean? You know, like, ask the preacher, what does believe mean? I mean, like, what does it mean in, in Greek and in Hebrew? You understand? And have you, you know, a lot of preachers don't preach from there. They don't even go to any of the original languages. You understand? And that means in a, in a, in a deep way that they only know a very superficial or a blockhead version of it. That's why we see the black church today just delving off just in prosperity gospel. It, it, it's like this. If you trust that God can give you money, you understand, and he does, then why not upliftment for the community? You, 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 you understand? Why not a true identity? Then we can deal with the issues, lingering issues of slavery and reparation and repatriation. You see, but that shows you that ones are not dealing with the full gospel. They're dealing with, you know, a, 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 a kind of a veil. You understand? A veil, but it's not like a full garment. It's like throwing a bathrobe on, but it's not like putting on a full, you know, a full outfit, in other words. But it's interesting that they say that because um, when I look at Mishnah, what is Mishnah, right? Mishnah right here means oral instruction, but come from Shinna. Shinna means to repeat. In a later Hebrew or latter Judaism, which is more like the European now, looking at what our ancients have left and taking on from the, the conversion, the faithful among the Jews later on interpret that as learn or teach. But what is Mishnah? Mishnah means to repeat. That's why I said in the, in, in the quote in, in the quote that we just um, referenced right here. Without the without the he that learned had learned the scripture and not the Mishnah. The Mishnah is like the repetition. It's almost like we, we come in the book coming up is Devarim, right? Devarim or the words. It's interesting that title Devarim, but Devarim or Orizadagim, Bamarinya means repetition. It means like to repeat. So we have Shinna, you understand? Shinna, which also means to repeat, and it's the first part of the Talmud, which that means to study, to learn, to become familiar from the Ethiopic, Telemeda, Lemeda, Telemeda. Certain, it contains certain traditional oral interpretation of scriptural ordinances, what's called the halakot. And it's said to have been compiled by the rabbis about A.D. 200. Any of, the, of these interpretations or teachings that is made by a distinguished rabbi. But the, here's the root. The root is in what shinna means, mishinna, that which is repeated. You understand? That which is repeated. You know, you know how they, we say practice makes what? Perfect. That which is repeated. You understand? It's like meditation. You understand? It's like memorization even. It's like study. It's like even reading. When you read something and you think about it, hmm, and then you read it again, and then even if you write it down, you know, and then if you come back to it later on, you now have it in your mind state, and you can really work with it. 
You understand? Better, especially being a word of God, a study of a word. So it's, it's like just, just hearing the word. You understand? Learning the scripture. You can learn the scripture by hearing, not even reading. You can learn just by hearing, but that you repeat. You understand? You go over. So certain quotes and verses that are given, you go over these. You repeat it. You understand? Even in the cycles of the Torah studies, you repeat it. And that repetition, that familiarity, you know how they say that repetition, repetition in good things is, 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 is good. You know what I'm saying? Repetition, that, that repeating. It's almost like when you're farming or you are plowing and tilling and preparing the land, you have to repeat certain processes. You understand? It's almost like when you're learning the Fidels or the, or the Amharic, you have to repeat. You understand? Repeat, you know? So the repetition is very important. It reminds me of a scriptural verse, uh, Psalms in the Tehillim, which says, um, God has spoken once, and this I have heard twice. That Jah speaks once. You see, he, he, we have the record from the scriptures, like he spoke to the prophets once. But this,